The challenge is to eat and burn 10,000 calories in one single day. I first heard of it a couple of weeks ago when one of my kids said, have you seen Will Tennyson just tried it? Today I'm gonna be eating and burning 10,000 calories. His second time and failed again. I just ran out of time. My kid said, you used to be really fat and eat loads. You should try it. I said, I love Will's videos, but I have no desire to do that. He said, but you do lots of cardio. You might have a shot. I said, to be honest, it just sounds a bit stupid. And then Jen got me this for Easter, a six and a half thousand calorie egg. I said, all for me. She said, no, you gotta share that unless you have good reason not to. I said, haven't you heard? I'm kicking Will Tennyson's butt in a 10,000 calorie challenge. Get your hands off my egg. Tracking starts in half an hour. And here's the plan. I've watched Will's video over and over and I'm not gonna make the same mistakes he did. He starts exercising intensely at midnight on the dot. My goal is to burn 1,000 calories before I go to bed. Joe Fazer, who also failed the challenge, did the same thing. Burn as many calories before bed to give myself another head start. Typical youngsters smashing it as hard as they can as soon as they're able and running out of puff. It's gone midnight and I'm starting with food. My regular breakfast, but a bit supersized, in here I've got oats, protein powder, chocolate milk, peanut butter, chocolate chips. Tracking it all on my fitness pal, 818 calories. If I started now with exercise, I wouldn't be able to get any decent quality sleep afterwards at all. But if I eat this now, I'm gonna be unconscious in half an hour. So, plan is to finish this, bed, wake up in three hours. This will have cleared my stomach, so I'll be ready to exercise and well fueled with almost a thousand calories in the bank already. Will may have youth and boy band hair on his side, but I got almost 50 years experience. I'd rather have boy band hair, but you work with what you got. Right, it's coming up for half past three in the morning. Uh, I'm rested a little bit, fueled. The good news though, have burnt a few hundred calories just by staying alive. <laughs> Uh, just over 300 over the last three hours. It's not many. I was just lying in bed, uh, very little tossing or turning. Um, those rested calories, as Garmin calls them, will actually, for many people, be the bulk of the calories you burn during the day. Even if you exercise on top, uh, just existing uses more calories. Uh, we'll wait until eight o'clock in the morning to start. I'm gonna hopefully get a head start by cracking on in the dark. Jen said, there is no way you are exercising in the house at half past three in the morning. So it kind of left cycling or running outside. And for reasons I'll explain later on, I don't want to start running yet. All quiet in town. Breakfast seems like a long time ago now. It's, uh, it's tempting to uh, pop in there and get a bit more to eat. Okay, halfway update, just gone through 45 minutes, just under 500 calories, heart rate, 108. I mean, it's just no bother at all. I'm almost warming up for the day, really. It's beautiful and quiet as well. I might start coming out more often uh, at this time. Right, I'm drinking water. Normally I'd have like a carbohydrate mix on the bike, but rules of the challenge, you can't drink your calories. So not wasting them on that. Uh, instead, I've been snacking on these crazy expensive chocolates. Uh, more on those a bit later on. Uh, yeah, it's all going perfect. Um, gonna pick the pace up a bit now because I wanna get the thousand in the one hour 30. Uh, but yeah, so far, so far so good. One and a half hour done. Just missed a thousand calories, annoyingly, um, but close enough. Uh, now to get in the house without waking the dogs up. <coughs> right, got 1,326 total calories so far. Got over 900 for the bike ride in total, but Garmin only regards some of those as active. I'll explain active and resting calories in a bit. Uh, right now, got to get out the door uh, with the last of my chocolates to finish off as well. The sun is up. It's uh, almost six o'clock in the morning. Been walking for about 40 minutes, heading to the swimming pool. That's how seriously I'm taking this challenge today. I hate swimming, but it's low impact. 
like this walking, that's why I'm not running. The problem is I'm big and heavy, which on the one hand is great for burning calories. If I go running with Jen, I'll burn more calories than she does, despite finding the run easier. But her body is just far better at taking a hard pounding than mine is. If I start doing anything high impact now, it's going to mess me up for later on. Okay, the walk got me just over 430 calories, I think. Let's see if I still hate this as much as I think I do. I hate it. Okay, that was a bit of a disaster. Uh, less than 100 calories before I realised I just hate swimming. So I got out. I would rather take a hard pounding than do that nonsense. Uh, the good news is that the swim and the walk there puts me on over 2,000 calories burnt so far. Plan is to walk to the gym near my house and jump on the elliptical. Target about an hour, 800 calories. Got to play catch up on these numbers after that swim. And if you're wondering how is this big old lump possibly going to beat YouTube fitness icon Will Tennyson. Will's strength is his strength. He's in incredibly good shape and very strong. Not only does he train incredibly hard, he's also clearly genetically gifted. But there are more genetic gifts available than just that. And when it comes to grinding out cardio, I think I might just have the edge on him. Okay, we're here. Now I love lifting weights, absolutely love it. We'll do it forever, but it cannot compete with cardio and nor can high intensity interval training when it comes to burning large volumes of calories. So I got my 800 calories, took me a tiny bit more than the hour, but no huge drama. It's still not even 9 a.m. And in total, I'm now on 3,296 calories. It just works. Look at cyclists, runners, swimmers, working out all day at a sustainable rate. It does just chug through calories. And it feels like it because I am starving. This is incredibly 613 calories. Uh, it's toast, peanut butter and jelly or jam, as we say. I went for it because Americans seem to eat it all the time and they know about consuming lots of calories. It seems like a weird thing to put together. I don't know if I like it because I'm really hungry or because it actually tastes okay. Okay, that was all right. I wouldn't have it again. Uh, this though is my secret weapon today. Hotel chocolates gigantic Easter egg. Uh, so monstrously huge that the Daily Mail wrote an article about it. They could not have been more horrified that this thing exists if they tried. I suppose technically if it had its own pronouns and had come here fleeing persecution in a foreign country then they would have been more horrified but they were still pretty horrified. The thing has 6,345 calories in total included in the 6,000 calories, a bunch of little treats, which is what I've been eating all morning, burn and fuel and burn and fuel, like a, a cross between Willy Wonka and an Iron Man. Uh, Willy Man. Really? I'm gonna guess that about 20% is in these, 80% in the egg. So basically when I finish these, I'll add 20% of the total 6,300 odd calories onto the total for the day, and I'll leave the egg for later. So it is five minutes to ten, three and a half thousand calories almost, gives me two hours to midday. It'd be great to hit five thousand halfway at midday. So I'm going to be doing ski erg and some sled push around the street. While I'm doing that I'm going to be snacking on my stupidly expensive uh, hotel chocolate chocolates. I'm going to drop an electrolyte into my water because uh, it's deceptive. I'm losing a lot of fluids doing this, especially outside where it evaporates off. I'm losing fluids and with that electrolytes. So boosting that. <sighs> okay, let's talk about how Garmin shows those calories. Resting calories. Shouldn't be called resting calories. They're staying alive calories. 
calories you burn just existing. If you did nothing, you'd still burn these. Active calories. The most obvious thing that's going to go in there is when you record an activity, like I'm doing now, cardio, and you hit stop, you get a score of calories burnt. Those go in there. Oh my God. But not at the level you'd think. For example, let's say I do a one hour activity and I burn 500 calories according to the activity. I won't get 500 calories added to the active calorie. I'll get 400 and I'll get roughly 100 put in resting calories because Garmin knows I'd have burnt those even if I didn't do the activity. The other thing that goes in active calories is NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, obviously. Any activity above staying alive that is increased activity, but you haven't recorded it as a session, as a training activity. So for example, it could include housework, walking the dogs, gardening, entertaining your spouse, or do I track that on my watch? Now, different people will have wildly different neat expenditure. If you're a postman, you love housework, you might have a huge neat calorie burn. If you work in an office, you've got a cleaner at home, you might have a very small neat calorie burn. But that's what goes in those boxes. Added on the 800 odd calories from the garage, and Garmin gives me a total, 4,368. I mean, that'd be cool to hit 5,000 by lunchtime. It'd be brilliant. Three of my little chocolate things left. Fluids. We're good. Right, I've called that a day at midday. I didn't quite get time to fit in what I wanted. Uh, 45 minutes, did about 500 calories, I think. 4,938 calories total for the day so far at halfway. And I feel all right. Finished up the uh, chocolates. Um, yeah, I don't feel too kind of worn down, just tired and hungry. I have a solution to one of those problems. Thank you. Mmm, that's good. Okay, this gigantic burger. Gets me 1,040 calories, 102 in the fries. Uh, nothing in the Diet Coke, can't drink your calories though. And this is going down a treat. I thought this meal, the big meal, the big burger in the middle of the day, packed in between all the exercise, I'd have to force it down, but I'm so hungry. The eating part of this day is a walk in the park. Mm. I should have gone for the bigger fries. Um, What's the point of all this? You can't out-train a bad diet. Everyone's heard of that. If you eat five, 600, 700 calories a day, more than you burn, you put on weight, and you can't really just tweak your routine to make up such a difference. But what about when you do a one-off event, a big event? Maybe you enter a half marathon or a marathon, or maybe you just go out all day hiking or cycling. Can you treat yourself on those one-off occasions where you burn a lot of extra calories? And the answer is not perhaps in the way you might think. I did a high rocks competition back in January, took almost two hours, I wore a weighted vest for charity, absolutely destroyed me, still only burnt 1600 calories. That's a pizza and a Ben and Jerry's and I'm back in a surplus. Three days ago, did a four hour gravel bike race, two and a half thousand calories, and I ate a thousand calories on the bike. It doesn't leave a lot of wiggle room for fun afterwards. And I see it all the time on a smaller scale with things like park run. People go and run for half an hour, 5K, and have a slice of cake. And I'm as guilty of that as anybody. And I know that the things that I'm telling myself have used huge amounts of calories haven't really. But my self-control issues when it comes to bad food just override common sense completely. So what's the point of today? Well, it's to show anybody watching, but perhaps more importantly me, that 10,000 calories of food is easy. 10,000 calories of exercise is very hard in comparison. And by midnight tonight, I would have given my self-control problems a 10,000 calorie slap in the face and beat it into submission. 
So the original plan was to wait until about 2 p.m. and then have a gentle row for about an hour maybe, and then see if I feel like running. Certainly don't want to run just after eating that big burger. It's coming up for half past one now, and I might as well just get on with it. I feel all right. One of the problems that Will had was that he got his eating done fine. 10,000 calories consumed. That was pretty easy. Not much of a challenge, but the burning part is the huge challenge. A little over 3,000 calories to go. And then had exercise still to do, and obviously never managed it. I'd rather be the other way around. I want to get the exercise done because I can always just stuff myself with an hour to go, but there's only so many calories I can burn in a short space of time, especially if it's late at night, by which time I'll have been at this for a day and pretty tired. One hour. Well, that's the longest row I've ever done. I didn't burn many calories. 503. I mean, I mean, you consider I'd have burnt 100 if I'd have just gone to bed. It's raining. Of course it is. Still not at 6,000 calories. Having hit 5,000 by midday to nearly three hours later, not have added another one is depressing. And I can suddenly see why this challenge is failable. It's easy to think, just pick up the pace, go faster, burn more. Increase effort, increase calories. It's not linear. I did an experiment last week. I went out on the bicycle, worked modest intensity, came back, felt good. 800 calories, one hour dead. Went to the gym, worked like crazy. On the treadmill, supersetted with burpees and all sorts of nonsense. 1,000 calories, one hour dead. So yes, 200 calories more, but I was just smoked for the day after that. So it's no good me just blasting out 1,000 calories in an hour. Got to love running. 422 calories, not even a half an hour yet. I'm going to walk till 30, then turn around and run back. I'll take an easy eight over pushing for 900 or 1,000, no need. 53 minutes, got the 800 calories. That was good. Okay, got my favorite marzipan bar, 500 calories in that. Nuts and nuts. This little bag, it's not far off 600 calories. Once for marzipan, I think. Calories burnt, 6,662 at uh, just after 4 p.m., which means I need to do 3,400-ish in five, six, seven, eight, eight hours. I'm very tired. Okay. Uh, serving size, all of it. When I add on the 5,140 calories that are left in the actual egg, it puts me at 10,057 calories. Literally all I need to do is eat the egg and I'm done. I am not leaving here until I have 9,000. The plan is combination of kettlebells, treadmill, rower, but ramping the intensity up from earlier. Okay, the first 900 calories done. Give a little breather, then go do the second. Oh my God. I had to take 800 calories for the last hour. Just had nothing left. Um, but it's half past seven. I have 1300 calories to go. Just gone 8 p.m just checking where I'm at. Uh, my Garmin is looking absolutely bonkers today with all the activities. I'm also nibbling on one half of the egg and it's not actually as uh, filling as I thought it would be. Oh, and also on the packaging, I just noticed it says serves 44. I get it's obviously not for one person in one day, ideally, but serves 44. Imagine going to a party with 44 people and, oh, I bought this egg for everyone. 
you're not getting invited again, are you? Right, on the watch, it does a thing where it projects forwards using resting calories to come. It's given me a projected total for the day of 9,199. Basically, I'm 800 short. There was a point earlier today where I was a bit uh, undecided as to whether this was going to happen, but um, it is now in the bag. So, what's the plan? Uh, Alp de Zwift, pretty much the biggest mountain in Zwift. Might be overkill for the calories I need, but it has a special place in my heart. Going up Alp de Zwift a few times was pretty much the first of my YouTube videos that were watched by anybody other than my mother. So, it just seems appropriate. On a good day, if I squeeze under an hour, I'm delighted. Okay, so just went through corner 10 at 44 minutes. That's normally a pretty good guide to halfway. So I'm gonna get the mountain done in an hour and a half. The mountain's only part of this route. I've been riding for just over an hour in total. 765 calories. So we're soon gonna be at the 800 that I need for the challenge. After that, just fun and giggles. As Goggins would say, don't stop when you're tired, stop when you're done. I don't think it's safe, fun and giggles. Uh, left calf keeps cramping. Feel like I'm gonna pass out and fall off the bike. Other than that, it's all good. Stay hard! Okay, last corner. Less than three minutes to go. I don't think I can make, I don't think I can make top 90. I don't think, I got nothing left. Nothing works. I got nothing. I got a... Ah, 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 um, I am starving hungry, but I've also got just like a weird shivery thing going on as well. I could eat the other half of the Easter egg, but I kind of fancy something savoury. So I'm going to go have a look in the kitchen to see if I can find something that will equate to those calories. And in about an hour's time, go to bed. It is now almost 48 hours since I failed the 10,000 calorie challenge. Things did not go to plan in the kitchen that night. I began by making myself a delightful avocado and mayonnaise dip to go with some tortilla chips. Incredibly hungry, I expected that to last me about 10 minutes before wrapping up with a little ice cream. And then I felt unusual. I sat down to ponder the situation, then I lay down. And then a large number of muscles throughout my body began to cramp. My upper abdominals, then my back and my calves, and they wouldn't stop. I assumed it was just the muscles that I'd worked very hard that day, which given that included my heart, I figured death would soon follow. Not wanting to die in the kitchen with a real possibility that the dog would eat me before morning, I made my way upstairs, took some muscle relaxing magnesium supplementation, and lay on the bed to try and work out if there was any part of me not suffering staggeringly painful spasms. I then shouted to my kid on the floor above and had him tidy up the kitchen because it was an absolute certainty that the dog would eat my dip before morning. I got about four minutes sleep during that night while my muscles tried to rip themselves apart and then the next day had a Garmin stress chart that indicated I should just walk towards the light. So failure to the tune of half an Easter egg or a snack for 22 people as Hotel Chocolate would describe it. What did we learn? Well, the list is probably quite long. At the top, I guess, would be stop a 10,000 calorie challenge when you burn 10,000 calories and don't just turn up Rocky Four and race up a mountain to try and crush some pointless 90-minute target. Uh, don't underestimate fluid and electrolyte loss. I went from 101 to 94.5 kilos. 
Annoyingly, had I known at the time, I could have changed my weight on Zwift and crushed that really quite important 90 minute target. And don't celebrate too soon, or you might end up looking a little bit silly. But on the positive side, I did demonstrate that burning calories is much harder than eating them, because the only reason I stopped eating them was the shutting down of my body caused by burning them. That said, I don't suggest you consider exercising yourself into the ground in order that you're unable to feed yourself as a sensible means of dietary self-discipline, but rather you just give a little thought to the likely amount you are burning even when you're undertaking something a little bit more arduous than normal, and certainly before you celebrate with an excess of food that may be in excess. And when I told my son how it all went, he said, it sounds like you should just call that a tie against Will, which is a pleasant way to leave things. No winners, no losers. He then said, have you seen Will's latest video where he entered a powerlifting competition without training? You should try, I said, stop there. That kid doesn't live here anymore.